Is it important for you to have fun in your marriage, to keep your marriage alive and crackling and fizzling and whizzling with fun? If so, it's obviously a mystery to her. That's what we're talking about. Stay tuned. Yes, yes, yes. How do you keep a marriage fun? Does it matter that a marriage is fun? Is it that critical? Why would two people married dedicate an entire YouTube video to talking about keeping a marriage fun? Is it, does it matter to you? This is my wife, Liz. We've been married for about 30 years, which I know must be shocking considering how young she looks. Oh. <laughs> no, I think it's important to keep a marriage fun because you're gonna get sick of each other if you don't. But what if you don't like fun? What if fun doesn't matter to you? Why, do you think I don't like fun? Well, okay. rumor has it. No, obviously fun, fun But matters. fun is going to be very specific to each person. Like, put me on a roller coaster, I will die. See, and that drives me nuts because that to me is fun. Oh. But sometimes the funnest part of that, and I know funnest isn't a word, but it is for our videos because it's easy to say, is seeing her oh, on the I roller die. coaster, sitting next to her on the roller coaster. Except the difference is, is that a roller coaster actually moves and is over in 30 seconds. What's better still is the Ferris wheel at Shields. Oh, gosh. If you don't have a Shields where you live, it's a huge sporting goods store. I'm getting anxious just talking about this. I, I believe you. I this really, is not an I act. I think I'm afraid of heights. You think? Like, yeah. no, the worst is at Lagoon, that stupid thing that goes across Lagoon the Lagoon is an amusement park oh, here in the Salt Lake me. City area. The Sky Ride? So it's basically a ski lift that doesn't go up a mountain. It just goes across the whole park. And for her to get on that, I have to con her and lie yeah, to her. So for me to have fun takes no adrenaline. I can watch a YouTube video of a roller coaster and that's probably the same feeling you get when you go on a roller coaster. Okay, so let's talk specifically. No, I, I doubt it. Let's talk specifically about how to have fun in the marriage. I, I mean, do we talk just about the physical getting out and doing fun things or are there ways to keep a marriage fun without even leaving the house? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's an important part, I think. No, you're right. So she's talking about intimacy in marriage, right? And you're right, it is fun. You know, and, and we might be profoundly Christian and those of you that are disagreeing with me right now, just bear with me, we are. Just because we're <laughs> members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints doesn't mean we aren't Christian. But, you know, as Christian as we are, we definitely believe that man and woman were put on earth to multiply and replenish the earth, and that the gift of sexual intimacy is a huge part of that. But we're not so backward and prude to think that, you know, that that isn't part of, of keeping a marriage fun and alive and vibrant, right? Oh, for sure. As she grabs my thigh. <laughs> <laughs> We do other things besides sex to have fun. We play oh, games. no, you're right. Yeah, so, so that's good. But, but let's just stay on that for a second. Oh, my gosh. Because No, I'm kidding. I mean, but honestly, but just I'll say this and no more. I don't think there's, I mean, we've known people throughout our marriages, our, our marriage. We've only had one, <laughs> truly, uh, you know, that are older than us, much older. We lived in a, another part of town a few years ago where there was a couple there that must have been in their late 60s, early 70s. It's still hot. Hot tubbing naked. Hot tubbing naked. And they got locked out. And they got locked out. I, I guess I don't need to repeat her. She's she's definitely audible. Um, but the greatest couple. You could tell they really enjoyed sweet, each other, had tender, fun together, laughed. They and... would serve. They were diligent. They were kind and very Christ-like, but made no qualms about, oh yeah, we still... You know, we still do what we got to do very regularly. And um, and it almost, I was going to say, it almost shows. But they kind of, their physical just countenance and demeanor, they're holding hands all the time. They're always snuggling. They're together. And they're, they were old. I mean, for those of you that are young, you know, that we're must old. make you sick. Yeah, we're right. old to you. But I mean, they were definitely... 70? Uh, yeah, you know, with graying and wrinkly and the whole nine yards and still very active. So I do believe that is a part of keeping a marriage fun. The, but, but before that, there's flirtation. There's, there's um, uh, socializing, courting, dating. I mean, 
Those things have to continue right. in a marriage. Well, and we try to go on dates and do those things. And I think having a weekly date, setting it aside, especially when the kids were younger, I think that was so important. Now we have a lot more time together. Yeah. But when the kids were little, actually having a set date night that we could reconnect. And so our marriage was the most important thing. And even if the kids were screaming, oh, don't go, don't go, it was important enough that we always had a babysitter and made sure that we were going out and doing something together. Well, because here's the thing that scares the living whatever out of younger couples who have kids. <clears throat> and you hear it time and again, we heard it, which is how many couples, once their children are gone and their empty nesters crumble, they oh, fall apart, they get divorced, it. they have affairs, whatever it is, because once their kids are gone, that thing that they most had in common is gone. And they realize well, we're just left with each other. And I haven't developed, I haven't continued developing a relationship with you over these years because we've been so busy with the kids. And really, you know, I started feeling that when our kids started to leave and we became empty nesters and we're not fully empty yet. We still have two at home that wife. are in their teens, right. late, later teens. And my mother, that's another video for another time. But anyway, my point is, is that, oh yeah, we were afraid that, you know, when, once we're empty nesters and we're alone, do we have anything in common? And I think a lot of couples go through that and they go, we just don't. It was, our kids, our kids were the glue. glue right. And now that the glue is gone, do we fall apart? I don't think so. And so that's where the, but that's where the fun comes in. We have a running tab up on that board over there of a score of Rummy Cube. That's the board game that we play by and the actual directions by the directions and we almost play it to the exclusion of other people because it it matters to us Who the has most the running score and so when other people join it's like okay and then well, we kind we of count. we have to pause our running score but that to us is very fun because we we laugh at each other we get a little competitive that's just a little thing like that you know we also find occasionally shows that we both enjoy Frasier. Or like, yeah, Frasier, like We've old school sitcoms, years. you know, but we do, we, we have certain things like that. What else do we do that's kind of... We go on a lot of walks and that's... So true. We probably that's the best. walk almost every night. If you're around, yeah. we go for a walk. Yeah. And it's a chance to get away, just talk, the two of us catch up. I mean, and we walk, you know, four miles yeah. or something. So. Mm -hmm you get into deeper aspects and stuff because it's not like just a short little walk. And there's no distractions. We're not on, on our, our phones. phones. There's right. no kids or anything no like that. No TV, nothing. In fact, nowadays with everybody being inside binge watching all the time, we pretty much have the streets to ourselves. There's like no, yeah, you don't see there's no other pedestrians. It's just us. It's, we could stop and have sex on the street oh and no one gosh, would even know. Oh my gosh, you gotta stop. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, we've already breached the subject. We're among adults here. In fact, there is a little spot over... Oh, on... he's so lying. <laughs> he's so lying. You're I've, just. Uh, I've been thinking would be a shady little. Anyway, um, no, so but that's fun. Well, so like we will go on hikes in the mountains. So we take our walks elsewhere. Well, we do. But you, I know until I. She has allergies and she coughs, and so we can't do a lot of that. I do have a motorcycle, which she hates and doesn't want me to have, and would rather have me sell it. But if it's a nice day and she's in the mood, she will absolutely jump on the back and go with me, and we right. will ride. And that's a sacrifice. But don't you love it? I mean, not really. When we come back alive, aren't you going? Oh, I, I this am was... when we come back. Alive. See, I'm a wuss. I am. I don't like roller coasters. I think too much about your skull being splayed on the. If you get in an accident on a motorcycle. <laughs> cycle look at the problems this, you know what she says this is what she says to me don't come back she says if you get in a wreck come back dead which of course has no sense whatsoever i don't think i've said that. you've said i don't want a vegetable i'd rather bury you yeah this was at the point where i was already changing all these diapers and to think i was going to change a 200 pounds man's diapers also don't ride the motorcycle i had enough <laughs> to do with all those little kids and you're out on your motorcycle oh stop it and he sometimes wears a helmet and sometimes no. he doesn't but you are better at it now than you yeah. used to be yeah. i want to feel the wind through my curls no yeah one final thing that but i think when we... you want me to pull the plug if you were brain dead do it for me Can i we, have it on video i don't want witnesses to that decision making process one final thing that we do that's fun that we haven't done in a long time but is still kind of the foundation of our entire relationship is Dance. dancing yes we oh. met each other dancing we both were very fun outrageous dancers yes we met at that dance we took i took her to other dances 
you know, we danced when we were young, married. And then, you know, when we started having kids and, and our lives slowed down, it stopped. But we do occasionally fire up Alexa and we'll... Anyway, and, uh, you know, we'll fire up some dance music and we'll dance in the kitchen or we'll dance out there. And the kids will someday, they grew up oh, with yeah. us dancing. They know how to mock her dance perfectly. <laughs> she has this dance that's just her and they all know how to do it. And that's fun for them and it's fun for us. The so, mocking is fun for them. For you in terms of how to keep a marriage fun. I think we've said this with other issues. You know, it, it really has to almost grow organically based on the relationship that you have with each other and your own personalities. So look for those things. And when you find them, you know, pull them out and really uh, do them, use them, practice them, celebrate them. Because it's that fun in your marriage that I think ultimately becomes a really strong bond. There's nothing quite like laughter and fun to bond people together because it's and music, dancing. Yeah, it just there is a shared sense of euphoria that comes from that, and and uh, and it can lead to sex. So wow, <laughs> you've said it like fifteen times. Well, you said it first. Thanks. Well, hey, if you had as much fun with this video as we just did, uh, I can't promise that we'll have any more fun than this one on another one. But for future reference, go ahead and subscribe and like this one. Tell your friends about it, and uh, we'll see you back here next time.